a 45 year old man presents to the clinic complaining of one month of diffuse abdominal pain with occasional nausea and vomiting he also reports generalized malice and a weight loss of 15 pounds over the last four months upon further history you discover that he has hepatitis b this is important previous history of hepatitis b age is 45 year old man and uh, presence to the clinic complaining of one month of diffuse abdominal pain so the present complaint is abdominal pain of one month of history which is associated with the nausea and vomiting and there is a weight loss generalized malaise weight loss of 15 pounds over last four months patient had a previous history of hepatitis b and uh, physical examination is notable per, uh, for uh, palpable purpura and the serum study shows elevated ESR. Elevated ESR is always a marker for chronic inflammation and increased WBC count. And you suspect that a vessel biopsy would reveal necrotizing arteriitis. Generally in your uh, MLEs, they won't give you this clue. But you suspect that the vessel biopsy would reveal necrotizing arteriitis. And you decide to start the patient on prednisone. The case is about polyarteritis nodosa. Why? Because if we talk about uh, the etiology and epidemiology of polyarteritis nodosa, generally the etiology is unknown, but it is associated with HBV infection in 30% of the cases, and it is also associated with hepatitis B, right? HBV infection. Primarily affect middle-aged men. See the age of the case. So if you see the age, 45-year-old man, hepatitis B. So associated with HBV infection, primarily affects middle-aged men. That is age approximately for polyarteritis nodosa is 45 years. That's what you need to know though. And what are the gross and microscopic findings in the polyarteritis nodosa? Where the name itself suggests poly means many. Arteriitis means inflammation of the arteries, nodosa. So what exactly it is, we will see. Small or medium-sized muscular arteries are involved. And uh, especially at the branching points of the vessels. So when we talk about the branching points of the vessels, typically of kidney, the branching points of the vessels of the heart, mainly the vessels are involved which are related to the organs like kidney, heart, liver, gastrointestinal tract, and these lesions are of different ages. Not all the lesions are not of the same age. Initially, it may start with one artery and progressively they may spread to other arteries. So in some arteries, the lesions are very severe and in some arteries, the lesions are very immature like that it is. So the lesions are of different ages is also very important for you to note. So polyarteritis nodosa involves small or medium-sized muscular arteries typically at the branching points of the vessels of organs like kidney, heart, liver, as well as gastrointestinal tract. And these lesions are of various or different ages. And if you talk about the microscopic picture, it shows transmural inflammation. Transmural means all the three layers of the vessel wall involved. So transmural inflammation of the arterial wall and this inflammation is associated with the uh, recruitment of the neutrophils, eosinophils, mononuclear infiltrate and always I told you whenever there's a necrosis of the vessel wall it should be always fibrinoid necrosis. So fibrinoid necrosis may be present in majority of the cases of polyarteritis nodosa. So this is what is about etiology, epidemiology and pathology and this gross and microscopic features we know. What about the clinical manifestations and treatment? Clinical manifestation because of severe inflammation, because of elevated ESR, you can say fever is one of the common finding, and uh, but uh, it is not considered to be a predominant finding. That's why it's not uh, given over here. Important findings are like weight loss, generalized weakness, malice, 
Abdominal pain is one of the important clinical manifestations in the polyarteritis nodosa. And this abdominal pain is often associated with nausea and vomiting. That's what is given in the case. Orthalgia is another very important and the most common finding in the pan. Renal failure is because of the involvement of the renal arteries and their branching points. Peripheral neuropathy is another important finding. So all the findings, whatever they mentioned over here, weight loss, abdominal pain, arthralgia, peripheral neuropathy are the most common and important findings. And other typical findings are constitutional symptoms. We can say like fever, malaise, or, uh, and uh, nausea and abdominal pain and vomiting are constitutional symptoms because of the elevation of ESR, because of the inflammation in so many arteries and because of the abdominal pain. And mainly because of severe hypertension, there will be cotton wool spots. That is because of retinal occlusions, because of the involvement of the retinal arteries, retinal occlusions, which shows cotton wool spots on the retina. And uh, very rare findings includes myocarditis, pericarditis, and palpable purpura, which are seen. But these four points are very important for polyarteriitis nodosa. And lab findings, because of systemic and chronic inflammatory condition, elevated ESR and leukocytosis is always present in the PAM. Always present in the PAM. And treatment, corticosteroids, there's a reason the patient is taken on prednisone. So azathioprine can be used, cyclophosphamide, or mainly to treat the etiology, that is HBV infection, as I told you that even though etiology is unknown for the polyarteritis nodosa, if it is a known case, it is more commonly associated with the HBV infection in 30% of the cases. So antiviral therapy is recommended if this polyarteritis nodosa is because of HBV-related disease. So... This is about PAN. In this PAN itself, let us talk about Churk Strauss syndrome. Because it is also why I am talking about Churk Strauss syndrome in PAN, because it is also another type of necrotizing vasculitis. And it is also affecting small and medium sized vessels like PAN, because PAN is also involving small and medium sized muscular arteries. Here, Churk Strauss syndrome is also necrotizing vasculitis involving small and medium sized vessels. But clinically, if you see how you have to differentiate between Churk Strauss and PAN, for Churk Strauss, there is a triad that is pulmonary vasculature involvement plus peripheral fluctuating eosinophilia plus late onset asthma which is unresponsive to the bronchiodilators. They'll give you this in the case. This is the triad for Churk Strauss syndrome. I'm repeating once again. What is the triad? Pulmonary vasculature involvement plus peripheral fluctuating eosinophilia plus late onset asthma, which is unresponsive to the bronchiodilators. This triad, if whenever you see this triad, then remember that it is a Churk Strauss syndrome, necrotizing vasculitis, affecting small and medium sized vessels. And the laboratory findings are also very important in the Churk Strauss because it reveals positive anti nuclear cytoplasmic antibodies called as ANCA. So, Sianca, Pianca are typically important in this case, and these are also associated with eosinophilia and. This condition, Churk Strauss syndrome, is treated with high dose of corticosteroids. So, because it, Churk Strauss is similar to that of polyarteritis nodosa, we also completed Churk Strauss syndrome.